if not for farmer Walter Knott, there wouldn't have been a Knott's Berry Farm amusement park. How did Knott go from farming berries on 20 acres in 1920 to creating one of the country's first theme parks? You'll find out on this episode of History Hunters, as Jeff and Sarah explore the history of, and in, one of Southern California's biggest attractions. Mr. Knott, let's get back to you. I'm a farmer. You're a farmer? Yes, I operate the uh, uh, Knott's Berry Farm. Well, you're the Knott of Knott's Berry Farm? Well, that's a very famous place in Southern California. Could you tell us something about it? History nuts like me have a hard time not seeking out history, even on fun trips to amusement parks. The entire park is drenched in My history. chicken dinner place, lady. I've visited Knott's Berry Farm since I was a child, but I was astounded how much nostalgia and history I encountered on a recent trip to Knott's Berry Farm in Buena Park. Walter Knott was born in 1889 and grew up in Pomona. Life got hard when at age six, his father died. Walter was harvesting vegetables in vacant lots by age nine. As a teen, he bought a small tract in the nearby Imperial Valley, and by 1909, despite a recession that was causing more experienced farmers to lose money, made a net profit of $500. He returned to Pomona, where he married high school sweetheart Cordelia Hornaday. In 1920, the Knotts leased 20 acres in sunny Buena Park to grow berries. In 1923, Walter struck upon the idea of selling berries from a lean-to roadside stand sheltered by palm fronds and equipped with a cigar box to hold the cash. By 1924, Walter was operating out of his famous berry stand. Mrs. Knott made and sold preserves, relishes, sauces, and candy. Eventually, the Knotts bought the land which was to become Knotts Berry Place. With the depression raging, Mrs. Knott began serving chicken dinners in a dining room. During the restaurant's first full year of operation in 1938, more than 265,000 chicken dinners were served. As crowd sizes grew, the Knotts felt the need to entertain dinner guests during long waits. In 1938, Walter had the idea to build a rock garden and waterfall. When the restaurant expanded in 1939, Knott was forced to deal with an eyesore outside the new windows, an old irrigation standpipe that stood about 12 feet high. He disguised the pipe as a volcano by hauling in 18 tons of volcanic rock from the Mojave Desert and added a boiler to create steam and a noise machine to rumble. He next recreated an old western ghost town with costume characters. The Gold Trails Hotel, or Old Trails Hotel, is typical of that found in Gold Rush towns. Originally built in 1868 in a mining town near Prescott, Arizona, it was disassembled and its parts used to build a home for the cyclorama. The number 13 room was used for storage due to minor superstitions. For decades, visitors posed with two concrete cowboys sitting on a bench outside this hotel. My family is one of them, seen here in 1966. That's me in the blue striped shirt. Sarah couldn't resist jumping on Old Betsy, the Borax Mine Special, which Knott rescued from Trona, California in 1941. 
he found the old abandoned wood-burning engine sitting on a short piece of track in the desert. Here's where the old uh, Sad Eye Joe guy is. I'm gonna go back here and talk to old Sad Eye Joe in the jail. One of my favorite experiences in Knott's ghost town is visiting Sad Eye Joe. In the 75 years he has sat behind bars, the stoic-faced Sad-Eye Joe has gone through three heads, all which carried on banter with generations of visitors. The original wooden head carved by folk artist Andy Anderson sits on a glass shelf in the Knott's Western Trails Museum. Hello. <laughs> How you doing? You scared me. Sad. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah. Your name's Sad Eye Joe, huh? That's right. Uh, what'd you do to get in here? I stole the sheriff's horse. Oh, that's stupid. I was gonna give it back to him, but he's a vindictive man. Well, that's what law enforcement's supposed to do, right? But I'm in here for 75 years. <laughs> Is that how long you've been in there? Yeah. Originally, Knott's made out Joe to be a desperate killer, but the story later softened to say he stole the sheriff's horse. Where'd he go poop? You don't want to know that. Yeah. God knows how much longer I'm going to be in here. Uh, he probably died in here, huh? Well, that's morbid, <laughs> but probably true. <laughs> but probably true. At least I get to see people walk by having fun. Sounds like Jeff Denham's dummy. <laughs> Ah, uh, good luck. Well, I, I've seen you here before, and I'm surprised you're still living. Well, when all you have to do is exist, you get pretty good at it. Did you know Walter Knott? I did. Did you? Yes. Uh, did he come by and visit you? He did. Yeah. He wanted to get me out of here, but there wasn't much he could do. I was around here when the boysenberry was first invented. Your mouth doesn't move when you talk. I've been rendered motionless by sadness. <laughs> well, I'll see you probably in another 10 years, buddy. All right. If you're around. Okay. <laughs> Take care. Bye. As we left Joe behind in the cell, I explained that his voice is actually cast from the two-story hotel building in the front. The man sitting there is able to see when visitors approach the jail through a periscope-type set of mirrors. <laughs> We're going on the gun shop, but I'm pretty sure there's no guns in here, really. Quite fake guns. There's an Indian, look how much they want for him. Jeez. Cigar store Indians date back to the 17th century and were a way to advertise for tobacco products, especially to illiterate shoppers who could not read advertising signs. They were a common sight in the late 1890s and early 1900s. I mean, you could buy Marilyn Monroe's license here, too. Close the guns. Where's the guns? Oh, it's like the replica I had that got stolen. That would really kill somebody living there. To fit this into History Hunters, I gotta take a look here at the postcards, historical figures. Geronimo, Annie Oakley, Sitting Bull, Billy the Kid, John Wesley Harden, Wild Bill Hickok, Pat Garrett, Matt Masterson, Prospector, and my favorite, there he is, Buffalo Bill. On the way out of Abigail's Trading Company store, I read a sign explaining that this building was a house on the neighboring farm when the Knots moved to Buena Park wow. in 1920. The former house was where the Knots were first hosted for a party after moving to that location. Oh, we got a dead person over here. Play dead. I'm playing dead, but can you even tell what I'm in? Yes, you're in a casket. Birdcage Theater. The Birdcage Theater was a tawdry place of entertainment in Lawless Tombstone, Arizona. It operated from 1881 to 1892 and developed a reputation as one of the wickedest theaters between New Orleans and San Francisco. 
It was a saloon, theater, and brothel all rolled into one. True to the movie Tombstone, more than 120 bullet holes are found throughout the original building. The Knott's version, however, offers only clean entertainment and a less violent clientele. It's just corn? Huh? Just corn? Yeah, it's just corn roaster. Have you ever seen corn sell for four bucks? <laughs> Show them your corn tea. Is it good? Yeah. confiscated my GoPro on that ride, so I had to shoot it with my iPhone. There's always two ways around things. The Iowa School did not come from Iowa after all. It was built in 1879 near the tiny Kansas town of Beloy by a group of farmers who had moved west. It was moved to Knott's in 1952 complete with original furnishings. Knock then added the bell tower and the bell. Remembering what he needed to remember. Neither do I. <laughs> so we must still live happily in a house. Happily There we go. Congratulations. <laughs> if my teacher was that loud, I would go crazy. The loudmouth school teacher of 2018 was boisterous compared to the mild mannered school marm of 1952, Miss Nina Dudin. In this photo, Nina is giving instruction to a group of Canadian sailors who visited the park. We're doing what everybody does at amusement parks waiting in line. Look at the fuzzy butt. <laughs> You're amused by that. <laughs> the Pony Express ride was added in 2008 at a cost of $9 million. It serves as a reminder of the short period of American history when post was carried by horse relay from St. Joseph, Missouri to San Francisco. A distance of 1,966 miles, a journey that they made in 11 days. The Pony Express never turned a profit and only operated for 18 months until the Transcontinental Telegraph came into existence. be the John Wayne Theater and John Wayne actually visited here. I think he was in the TV special that I remember watching as a kid. On June 19, 1971, the Knotts hosted the premiere of John Wayne's movie, Big Jake, with Wayne and California Governor Ronald Reagan both in attendance. It was Knotts' chance to debut his $5 million theater. His philosophy is very much like ours. He's a family friend and he was gracious enough to let us use it. My longtime friendship and admiration for Duke Wayne and my great feeling of gratitude to Mr. and Mrs. Knott for what they've meant to the state and the community. So I'm delighted to be here. The theater devoted museum space to showcase John Wayne movie memorabilia, including costumes from True Grit, co-starring Glenn Campbell. I recall seeing the collection while waiting in line to see a performance of Kenny Rogers in the first edition. Campbell and Wayne taped a segment at the theater on September 2nd, 1971 for the Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour. Thanks! <laughs> hey, you know, the last time we worked together, that was fun. It was at the premiere of your new movie, Big Jake. Yeah, I got a kick out of that because of the new theater. The premiere was at the John Wayne Theater, built at Knoxbury Farm. 
as a tribute to the Duke here. That evening was a real thrill, and it's a nice thing about that place. I can get in free now. <laughs> well, I tell you what, if you're ever down that way, don't miss it, because around the lobby, there's displays showing all the original costumes, the props, and, well, everything from Duke's biggest movies. Four years later, John Wayne's name was replaced as the Good Times Theater, as seen here behind Michael Jackson in 1984. In fitting with the addition of Camp Snoopy in 1983, it was again renamed, this time, the Charles M. Schultz Theater. Coca-Cola featured a number of World War II personnel on advertising, including WAX. WAX stands for Women's Army Corps. About 350,000 women served in the armed forces during World War II. They had their own branch of services, including the Women Air Force Service Pilots, WASPs. Women also served in the Marines and at a branch of the Coast Guard called SPARS. About 70% of women who served in the military during World War II held traditionally female jobs, such as typists, clerks, and mail sorters. Women were not permitted to participate in armed conflict, but their duties often brought them closer to the front lines. The Calico Railroad has been in operation at Knott's since January 12, 1952, and is an authentic Denver and Rio Grande narrow gauge train. I have a feeling this train is going to be robbed by that guy. It boasts the highest crime rate in all of Orange County, as notorious ghost town bandits still hold up departures from the Calico Square Depot. Incidentally, the 1881 steam engine cost Walter Knott $25,000 to transport from Colorado to Buena Park. The train depot was trucked in from the nearby town of Stanton, just five miles away. You want to go over to the mine? Right. You getting friendly with them? So when I was a kid, my grandmother rode this train, 75 I think it was. She thought she would play a trick on the robber, because this train always gets robbed. She decided she was going to poke the robber in the leg with a toothpick. So I told that guy I was a Pinkerton agent. Pinkerton agents were actually in charge of stopping train robberies and the losses that railroads were suffering around the turn of the century and before. The Pinkerton Security Agency was started by Alan Pinkerton, one of President Abraham Lincoln's first guards. Gotta get robbed, or this won't be the same experience I had as a kid. He said that was Edna. The rail car Edna was once used by Otto Mears, president of the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad. He was responsible for building multiple railroad lines through Colorado's San Juan Mountains. It was also Mears who gave the Colorado State Capitol its golden dome when in 1908 he suggested replacing the tarnished copper sheathing with gold and persuaded the Colorado Mining Association to donate 200 ounces for the project. I am so not happy. This train was not robbed. I guess it's just too politically incorrect to rob trains anymore with their guns. Mr. Knott desired to add an innovative attraction where visitors could board a hollowed-out log to ride down a flume through a logging camp. 
groundbreaking on the $3.5 million log ride project took place in 1968. Mr. Knott invited his old friend, actor John Wayne, to partake in the inaugural ride on July 11, 1969. Wayne's son, Ethan, tagged along for that ride. Cordelia Knott christened the first log ride with a bottle of wine, and Duke seemed to enjoy his entire experience. Walter Knott envisioned a ride through a calico silver mine with visitors aboard ore cars. It was crafted from his imagination of the old town of Calico, east of Barstow, which he purchased in 1951 and began restoring. The ride opened in 1960. <laughs> Now that's what I call team. They don't call a man's best man for no Ray Spark and we'll all get blasted to Kingdom Come. <laughs> Today, Calico bears a strong resemblance to Knott's Berry Farm. Calico yielded over $86 million in silver in more than a decade. When silver prices plunged from $1.29 per ounce in 1880 to just 57 cents in 1896, Calico's livelihood was over. By 1966, the Knott's had invested over $700,000 in restoring Calico, which he deeded over to San Bernardino County in 1966. It's funny, nobody knows. Jeff continues his quest to locate the original Knott's Berry stand, which had once been displayed in the park on what was once Reflection Pond. History Museum. <laughs> 1914 cash register. A roulette wheel. What else they got here? Oh, a little diorama of uh, Old Town.
so I have a question. Sure. For many years, there was a berry uh, farm with a stamp that I thought was the original berry stamp. Mm -hmm. And now they're telling me that it didn't doesn't exist. Probably not anymore. Okay, so you're not. But it did have a berry stamp here. At right. Time. Chicken dinner from this is Knott's famous chicken dinner restaurant. All day I've been asking employees where the original berry stand is located. It used to be in the park, and I was just told by a waiter after asking like the sixth person that the actual stand no longer exists. The wood's rotten, of course, after 70, 80 years, so there's a replica of it that has been moved from the original location of the park and that it's in the ghost town area. So we're gonna to try to find it, but you know how that is. We've walked our butts off all day. This is a mystery that will be solved shortly. Lo and behold, there it is. The replica, it's a replica, it's not the real one. In 1948, Knotts used over 5,000 bottles for this house in his park. It was modeled after one he saw in Rhyolite, Nevada as a young man. Houses made of bottles were not uncommon in boom towns since standard construction materials were in short supply and saloons were quickly emptying plenty of bottles. Knotts ordered the building of a bottle house in his resurrected calico in 1953. When I was a kid, I had not ever visited Philadelphia, so I appreciated Knott's reproduction of Independence Hall in Buena Park. Today, most people ignore the hall and its American history lesson for the thrills of the roller coasters. Quite the American patriot, Walter Knott wanted a place to memorialize our founding fathers and teach America's founding. Ground broke on a full-scale replica of Independence Hall in November 1965. Painstaking detail to brick making meant handcrafting brick near Riverside with red clay from Lake Elsinore. It was finished in time for a 4th of July dedication in 1966. In their 63rd year of marriage, Cordelia Knott passed away in 1974, and Walter followed seven years later. They rest side by side in the Loma Vista Cemetery in Fullerton, about six miles from their beloved theme park. Looking, are you married, Uncle Walter? Yes, I'm married. Uh -huh. Are you happily married? Yes, sir. How long have you been married? I've been married um, 43 years. You're the kind of a knot that doesn't come untied easily, aren't you? I guess I tried. You probably heard that before, too, huh? No, I don't believe that I have. I think that one's new. <laughs> now, how did you meet your wife? Did you both run aground in the tunnel of love or something uh, ordinary like that? No, uh, gosh, it's been 43 years. That's so long I've forgotten just the first time. The Knots left a legacy of love, family, patriotism, imagination, and hard work. The country, indeed the world, is a better place because of them, and probably a little more flavorful, too.